now in today's class of pattern recognition i will start with conditional probability now what is conditional probabilities for example a and b these are two events which are connected with some random experiments random experiments and in this case the probability b should not be zero and we can write the conditional probability of a given b so we write p a given b this is the notation and of conditional probability okay this is defined to be the okay a given b means the occurrence of event a after b occurred okay then we can write p a given b equal to p of a b by p of b where again p b cannot be zero and similarly we can write p b given a as again p a b by p a now from this we can write p a b which is nothing but p a into p b given a so in this case p a cannot be zero okay and also p b p a given b so b given a and a given b so in this case okay these are the non zero elements now if a and b are two independent event now independent means if we draw a venn diagram for example a is a event b is a event so they are not superseding with each other now a if if any case if a and b if they are not uh, independent even uh, there are some dependency or um, there is a relation between a and b then we cannot say this is independent even so for example uh, here in this case we can say that uh, this is a and this is b so this is a intersection b so this event they are not independent so if a and b are two independent event we can write p a b equal to p a dot p a p b now if a and b are independent even there is no issues otherwise we can calculate by some way you know uh, that how we calculate p a a b that's from conditional probability now from conditional probability from probability theory we can calculate okay lot lot many things with probability but when these two events are okay having some relationship so now the relationship like they can be mutually exclusive there can be different factors in between this particular okay conditional probability now conditional probability we can calculate so from a basic example uh, for example if 
we have for example two URL two URL now there are three red balls and two green balls for example three red balls and two blue balls so you can calculate conditional probability in okay, using all those factors getting a red ball so probability of getting red ball will be p of b1 intersection r plus p of b2 intersection r and p of p3 intersection r now this will be having conditional probability so probability of b1 into probability of r by b1 similarly we can write probability of b2 into probability of r by b2 plus probability of b3 into probability of r by b3 so if you draw a diagram okay in such a form for example at this juncture initially you start the operation first you select either b1 you select either b2 or you select either b3 so the probability of getting b1 is one third probability of getting b2 is one six probability of getting b3 is half okay this is what is being given now once you select b1 then there will be probability of getting red ball or blue ball now probability of getting red ball from the urn is 3 by 5 so here in this case probability of getting red ball will be 3 by 5 probability of getting blue ball will be 2 by 5 here it will be 2 by 6 and 4 by 6 here it will be 5 by 9 and 4 by 9 so if we draw the diagram 
the probability of getting red ball will be probability of getting red ball will be 3 by 5 and 2 by 5 so this will be 3 by 5 and this will be 2 by 5 probability of getting red ball and blue ball here in this case will be 2 by 6 and 4 by 6 so here it will be 2 by 6 and 4 by 6 and here in this case getting blue sorry red ball and blue ball will be something like 5 by 9 and 4 by 9 so this will be 5 by 9 by 4 by 9 so probability of getting red ball the conditional probability is 1 third into 3 fifth plus 1 sixth into this and half into this so the probability we can calculate 1 third into 3 by 5 plus 1 6 into 1 6 into 2 by 6 plus half into 5 by 9 so this is probability of getting red ball so we can calculate now this example we can calculate something like that probability of b1 given r will be probability of r by b1 probability of b1 divided by probability of r which we have calculated similarly probability of b2 given r we can calculate same fashion probability of b3 given r we can calculate in this same fashion so this uses conditional probability so probability of a given b is basically probability of b given a into p a by p b so this comes from base theorem so let's discuss this again in details that how it comes now for example there are two events a and b so this is a intersection b and combined together we get a union b so this is a intersection b now let's assume let's assume that uh, first b will happen after a so we can write probability of a given b is as probability of a intersection b by probability of b where probability of b should not be zero similarly we can calculate probability of b given a is as this is same probability of a now probability of a intersection b is calculated as probability of a given b into probability of b or probability of b given a into probability of a which we have already calculated so from this we can calculate probability of b given a is probability of a given b into probability of b by probability of a so if we look into the base theorem we will come to base theorem so so for example h is hypothesis and d is data okay so probability of h given d is calculated as probability of d given h into probability of h by probability of d 
so let's come down to base theorem in details now what base theorem says now base theorem says that event a can occur only if now from the above we can say that an event a can occur only if one of the mutually exclusive and exhaustive set of events pi occurs then we can find out the conditional probability as p of pi given a is p of a given bi into p of bi and summation of i equal to 1 to n p of pi into p of a by bi so now these events can be mutually exclusive so the derivation is something like that so we have find out probability of bi given a is p of bi into p of a by bi and summation of i equal to 1 to n p of probability of bi and probability of a by bi now there are these are events are mutually exclusive so you can write probability of a bi which is p a into p of b i given a and probability of b i into a similarly we can write this into probability of a given b i so from that we can find out probability of bi given a equal to probability of bi probability of a by bi by probability of a hence the base theorem concludes concludes as the formula probability of bi by a is probability of pi into probability of a by b i into probability of a this is called probability of hypothesis so we can calculate something like the probability of b1 given a is probability of b1 into probability of a by b1 into divided by probability of b1 into probability of a by b1 plus probability of b2 into probability of a by b2 so we can find some pro formula using base theorem from this okay there are several events so if different events occur we can describe this particular probability in this particular fashion okay so we have base hypothesis and base network so so if we study in the field of pattern recognition we use this particular notation that probability of wi 
given sorry uh, let's write in a proper way probability of wi given x equal to probability of x given wi into probability of wi into by probability of x so this is a base theorem now this is Bayes rule now in Bayes rule we can see that this is the outcome probability of given x okay the input is probability of x given w probability of w and x and px now px is the evidence now here in this case p of wi is called prior probability of random sample and p of x by w1 is called likelihood and we can find the discriminant function for posterior probability which we are calculating that's p of wi by x sorry given x this is called posterior probability now we can also calculate the discriminant function discriminant function this discriminant function is given as gi of x which is ln of p of x by wi plus ln of p of w wi so sorry to calculate that now the calculation starts from the beginning now this is p of for example wi x is p of x wi into p of wi so we calculate g1 of x which is taking the log ln of p of x by wi plus log of p of wi so this is discriminant function now this can be calculated using a formula now now you can calculate by this P of x given wi is actually written as determinant of phi i 2 pi to the power t will do the derivation later dot exponential of minus x minus u to the power t i 2 minus i x minus mu i divided by so this is the function it's getting calculated and this is substituted here and you can get gi uh, it's easy to calculate gi and now finally you can say that gi will be calculated as gi 
will be calculated as minus d by 2 if you take log ln 2 pi minus half ln minus x minus v y i2 minus 1 x minus mu by 2 plus ln p of w so this is basically a function okay now you can also calculate this generating function furthermore and the derivation is comes around minus half to the 40 minus 1 to x minus mu minus d by 2 log 2 pi minus 1 by 2 ln ln p of okay so so from this we can calculate so let take that gi equal to p of gi and x and p of wi equal to p of wj for all values of i and j and i not equal to j so we can write gi x is as log of p of x given wi which is nothing but log of 1 by root over of determinant summation i to pi to the power d minus x minus mu to the power t minus 1 x minus mu i in a brief we can write this one as k into d1 square plus q where d1 square can be written as x minus sorry x minus mu y to the power d x minus u y so this can be further simplified and written as d i square equal to x minus mu y square which is x to the power t x minus 2 mu y t x plus Some 
problem let's uh, solve few problems with conditional probability and Bayes theorem for example Sir Padampa Singhani University in this particular semester 2015-16 January to March May okay 200 students registered for CS 454 pattern recognition mm. out of these 200 students 30% students are from CS and 70% students are from other branches others and we found that from this 30% 80% students are male and from this 70% 40% students are male so 20% is female and 60% is female now what will be the probability that randomly selected students is a CS major so we can find out a table in this particular format CS others ok so 30% of Total we are calculating 30% of 200 students is 60 students, others 70% of 200 students is 140. So we can sum find out that this is total number of students. So total is 200. Now, out of that number of male and number of female, we can calculate. So, number of male is again 80% of. 60 which is 48 and again remaining 20 percent of 60 is 12 so this is this gives you 60 and here in this case you we are getting 0 0.4 into 140 which is nothing 56 so total is 48 plus 56 104 and here it will be obviously 96 so 0 0.6 into 140 is 84 so so we can find out the conditional probability mm -hmm. probability of cs will be 3 by 10 or 0.3 probability of non cs is now 0.7 so 1 minus 0.3 is 0.7 we can also calculate probability of male probability of female so we have we got information that probability of male given cs is actually 80 percent probability of female given cs is actually remaining 20 percent you can also write instead of female male prime or male prime so reduce number of variables so now now you, you, you can calculate probability of male given non cs is 0.4 so probability of male female given non cs is 60 percent now we can say this is both mutually exclusive and exhaustive so this is the diagram probability of cs okay this is 0.3 probability of non cs which is 0.7 so at this juncture we calculate probability of Point eight. This is 
probability of m given cs so this is we calculate probability of cs dot m which will be 0.24 probability of female from cs is 0.2 so this is probability of cs dot zero six so at this juncture again we can calculate probability of male given non cs probability of female given non cs so this point six and this point four so probability of non cs male is zero point two eight so we are calculating the total probability non cs and m is 0 0.4 so initially we have seen the problem that initially there were 2200 students so we can calculate from the table so different fi findings and we can explain the conditional probability from this derivation and we can always say that probability of ai given b is nothing but probability of b given ai into probability of ai This is a very generalized probability we can find out from Bayes theorem. Now if we look into the Bayes theorem, if we find out the probability of P of given CK given variables x1 to xn, so probability of CK given x is given as probability of CK into probability of x given ck px so we can write something like that that posterior is actually prior into likelihood by evidence so this is the formula so you can write in the same fashion probability of a given b is nothing but probability of b given a into probability of a divided by probability of So this is posterior this is prior this is likelihood so basically we calculate the above equation in this particular format so let's take one more sample and we find out the example in this particular fashion so let's take sample of in a sample we are getting some sample of male or female so let's find out the probability of male and probability of female from these different estimations 
So once we calculate the estimation, so this conditional probability will be coming into the picture. So basically, we can find out the conditional probability using base here. So, so let's take a different problem and solve it. So let's quickly wrap up with uh, you know with conditional probability. So if we write conditional probability as if A and B two events B occurs we need to find probability of A given B so this is actually probability of A given B probability of A B probability of B where probability of B always greater than 0 so here in this case these are two events and this is probability of a intersection b so we can read this as conditional probability that on probability of a given b so probability of a given b we can find out and and from this we find out the base theorem now base theorem we can write probability of a given b probability of b given a into probability of a by probability of b this is base theorem so from base theorem We can also write if we take probability of B as summation of probability of B given A into probability of A. then we can also write like that probability of a given b equal to probability of b given a into probability of a and pb we can write summation of p of b given a into probability of a so using this theorem base theorem we can solve several probability function and we can find out several events of probability okay so so summing up with today's lecture okay we write base theorem as p of wi given x equal to p of x given wi equal to p of wi by summation of k equal to 1 to n p of x given w k into p of w k this is what we write base theorem where x is called the feature vector and wi is the ith class now whenever we calculate this p of wi this is called p 
prior probability p of wi given x is called posterior probability p of x given wi is called likelihood and p of x is normalization In machine learning, we'll be having two things. One is called MAP, that is maximizing post a posteri posteriori, maximizing a likelihood. Now, these two are equivalent when P of WI is constant. These two will be equivalent when P of WI will be Now coming to the matrix covariant covariance. Now, if we find out the covariance of x, let's take a new pen. If we calculate covariance of x, this is called expectation of x minus mu by expectation of mu to the power t which is calculated now as c1 in and c1 in to mu n square. Now this is C i i. So C i i is the value. So this is C i i is nothing but called mu i square and C i k is actually rho of i k into rho i rho k where rho i k is correlation is basically called correlation coefficient okay now if we calculate the normal distribution and Gaussian distribution from that we can calculate fx as 1 by 2 pi to the power n by 2 summation of half exponential minus half so this now this can lead to a moment generating function now from moment generating function we can further calculate the g so basically fx of x is actually nothing but root 2 pi sigma exponential of minus half x minus mu to the power this this is to calculate the covariance and the covariance factor now this we have calculated so if we are talking about okay statistical pattern recognition in statistical pattern recognition we need to find out that what is different types of probability now joint probability and conditional probability then base theorem and then this base theorem for used in pattern classification so once we calculate the 
pattern classification okay then we can find out the likelihood maximum likelihood posterior and prior and we can find out the ratio in between them so that's all thank you